Well, welcome back to the Killer Bee Studios podcast replay. And today we have a special guest. His name is Todd Stack. So he's um, very well known in the Christian radio industry where uh, Killer B and I work, and he has an amazing story. So not only does he have an amazing story, but he's got a pretty amazing uh, beard going on. It's like, I think it's like down to his ankles almost, right? <laughs> yeah, he steps, he trips over it often. <laughs> <laughs> trips over it often. No, but this is an amazing story. I mean, you talking about, you know, you run into situations in life where it's hard to forgive someone. This is a story. If you've ever struggled with forgiving someone, this is a story that probably uh, even ups the game on that forgiveness side. So with that, I think we should just go ahead and dive on it. Olivia, tonight our guest is a dear friend of yours, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to ask him if he's a dear friend or not. But yeah, I know I've known him for a long time. <laughs> I already like him because he's already trying to scare you outside. So I'm like, this guy. Yeah, yeah that's I, true. And I tell yeah. you what, I look. Now, if you guys, when you guys see his avatar, if you're like, I wonder if his beard is really, like, he's got a pretty, he's got a style you of beard. You did do a good job for once with an avatar. Yeah. yeah it does look you. like him. Our guest Todd is, he's going to be coming on. He's going to be sharing his story. Uh, it's, it's a shocking story of forgiveness. Uh, and we're going to bring him out here in a little bit. But first, before we do, Olivia, I want to ask you some stuff. I want to ask you, you know, we're going to be talking about forgiveness tonight. And when you hear the word forgive, I would like to know how does that make you feel? Ugh. It doesn't make <laughs> me feel great. <laughs> oh, I, I agree. Uh, I mean, I, I can see what yeah. you're saying there. But I was wondering, like, yeah. and you I could actually even feel it in the tone of your voice, how you felt. <laughs> yeah. I like to hold a grudge. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you feel the same way when you think of the word forgive? Like yeah, uh huh, yeah. I mean, you got to forgive somebody. It doesn't feel great. Or then when you want someone to forgive you, it, it how does it make you feel when you want someone to forgive you? Does it change? Oh, uh, yeah. It makes me feel a little more like helpless because I'm like, please, I want them to forgive me. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. Whatever I did, blah, blah, blah. You know? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So let me ask you this before I'm going to go to a question here for all the audience members that I would love to get some input from. But before we go there, Olivia, Olivia let me ask you this. What, and we're talking about the word forgiveness, what does forgiveness mean to you? Ooh, um, I mean, it really just means uh, looking at the situation and realizing we're all human and extending grace that we would like to be given. Um, so, yeah, it's just treating, almost treating others the way you want to be treated, giving yeah. them that grace. So, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so here's a question I got for everybody in the audience. What are some things that that might prevent you or have prevented you from forgiving someone before? I would love to hear some people's some people's thoughts. Like, what are some of those barriers? A lot of times, it's the memories that it's harder to 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 let go of, and those memories will haunt you. And you know what? And you, then you say, you know what? I can't forgive that person because I still have it on my mind. It's still affecting my life. And a lot of times, though, it's not the, the 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 forgiving part, but it's the forgetting that stops mm. us. My biggest pet peeve are are re repeat offenders. Like when they ask for forgiveness and they ask for forgiveness and they ask for forgiveness for the same thing over and over and over again. I have a hard time forgiving that person for those uh, things that they did. I forgive a lot of people. I'll even it's when they continue to do it, when they continue no. to to not care that they're hurting you or whatever they're doing. So you guys, just let you guys know, our, our guest, we're going to bring him out. And his name is Todd. Uh, we think Stack. he's a friend of Matt Olivia. It's Todd Stack. We think he's a friend of Olivia. We'll find out. You guys will get to ask him. <laughs> but, you know, he's new. So he's this is his first time experiencing it. So if you guys please, let's rein him with confet. Let's give him a great welcome here to, to Horizons. And Todd Stack, come on out. Join us out here at the Killer Bee Studios. Hey, thanks for Ooh, joining there us. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He gave you a high five. Hey, yeah, what's up, oh, man? Yeah. Oh, he smacked me in the face. <laughs> I'll take it, man. I'll take it. You know what? Oh, hey, you know what? he's dancing. He is. He's got the moves. And I just want to just let you know, Todd, that I know you smacked me in the face and I forgive you. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> hey, uh, thank you for forgiving me. That You're was, uh, welcome. <laughs> I may ask for forgiveness before the show ends again. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Welcome to the metaverse. I know this is a, a first time experience for you. Uh, and, you know, you see all the confetti. So right now you won't be able to hear anybody talking, but we will bring them up. And, and afterwards, gotcha. you guys won't bring everybody up here to take a selfie afterwards as well. But Todd, I would like to first go ahead and start off and just give you 30 seconds to tell us a little bit about Todd Stack. Who is Todd Stack? 30 seconds. Wow. 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I am married uh, to my wonderful wife, Hillary. We've been married. I think it'll be 28 years this year. Wow. 28 awesome. three children. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Uh, oldest is a boy, 25 years old. Uh, daughter's 20. The, the boy's in Orlando. Uh, oh, our, really? Our daughter's in um, Montana. Weird, right? Wow. And then our son, our youngest is 14. He's still with us. So it's like we have three only children. And so uh, it's kind of awesome, but kind of weird at the same time. Um, so I work, I've work. i worked in radio most of my life as a career. That's where Meta, Olivia, and I met. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. We worked together. And then, um, you know, I have a relationship with Jesus. And I believe that uh, he called uh, our family to Nashville for another job. And it was very, very difficult to leave the team uh, where uh, Meta, Olivia was and um, but yeah, so we currently live in Nashville and, um, the job ironically that I came to do lasted about three and a half years. And then I was let go and, uh, kind of rocked my world. But at the same time I got COVID then, and then, um, I started my own business. Wow. And it's crazy. I literally work right here from my house <laughs> and I get to encourage and champion, uh, radio DJs and consult radio stations. And, um, I wish I would have done this like 20 years ago. It's amazing. Oh, that's Yeah. So I, 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 I don't know if I'll ever go back to like a workplace ever again in my life. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's, that's awesome. That was a good 30 second, uh, rundown too. And I know there's so much more behind your story. You want to let everybody know how they can connect with you on social media. Cause I know, I think you're, you're on Instagram a lot, right? You do a lot yeah. of stuff on Instagram. I'm, I'm on Instagram. My, my company's name is beyond. 615. And so uh, 615 is the area code for the Nashville area. So my goal is to help uh, artists, music and radio stations, wherever their area code is, um, take the music that's made in Nashville and take it beyond 615 to make an impact in their local community. So beyond.615 is my uh, Instagram. I also have done a few uh, videos with some people you may know if you're into contemporary Christian music. And uh, I've got a YouTube channel that I've not updated probably in over a year, but there's, I don't know, 17 or so uh, interviews up there at uh, beyond 615 on YouTube. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Brian. I just want to hit pause for just a second and give a big shout out and thank you to all of you who have supported our Metaverse podcast experience. Season four of the podcast will begin in March of 2024. While we gear up for the new season, I want to invite you to join our Discord community at discord.killerbstudios.com or click the link in the show notes. It's a perfect place to keep the conversations flowing and stay connected between seasons. I hope to catch you there. And with that, let's get back to the episode. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And you're, you're, you do really good on your, on your, uh, Instagram too. Now I understand the beyond 615. I was, I was like, I just gotta be something like, I know he doesn't just stay with just within the area code of 615. I should have just put the word beyond. I mean, should have looked up the definition, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. beyond 615, but I love how you're doing it. Hey, I forgive you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank oh you. You guys see that? We're just throwing forgiveness <laughs> cool. everywhere. <laughs> well, That's great. That's well, great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Todd, uh, you know, I caught word, you know, Meta Olivia told me a little bit about your story, but I haven't heard it directly from you. Now, from what I've heard, you have a pretty incredible forgiveness story. So I'd love for you to take some time and we're going to bring up the audience here in a little bit. But okay. for now, I don't know. I'm just going to give you some, maybe some just a basic, basic direction. If you could kind of give us, how did, how did it all begin? Like your yeah. story? Uh, what happened? When did you realize you needed to forgive? And why was forgiveness important? Sure. So, so um, 
about 10 years ago or so, I decided to go on a health journey. And I realized that basically one calorie equaled 3,000, uh, one pound equaled 3,000 calories, right? So if you can limit your food or eat better food and also exercise, you could lose a half a pound a week or a pound a week or whatever it might be. And then I stumbled on, I started walking one mile a day and um, then I decided to run one mile and someone at work said, you know, well, why don't you do a 5k and that's 3.1 miles. So I did a 5k and then I started buying running shoes and then someone said, you need to do a half marathon. And so I found myself training for races every single week of the year, basically up to marathons as the years went on. And so what happened at one point was, I guess, I didn't realize this, that I had uh, hernias right down below my belly button. And so they began to hurt a little bit and they began to bother me. Um, And so I went to the doctor and they were like, yeah, we need to, you know, get, sew these up and get you back into, uh, you know, where there's no pain. And so um, it's funny, the whole time I had a very... um, uneasy feeling about this whole process. Uh, mm. cause I know I'd be, have to go under anesthesia and do that. And I've never, I've never done that. I've never really broken a bone significantly in my life or been in the hospital. You know, I was age 45 at the time or so. This is back in 2016. Mm. So we planned the surgery around Christmas time. And that was like in the middle of resting from races. And then, you know, I wanted to get back and start training right away. And it was about a six week period. Most operations have, you know, you're six weeks off or whatever. You take it easy. And so um, driving down to the hospital, my wife was driving me and um, I was just quiet. And she was trying to make me laugh and feel comfortable. And she just leaned over or when she was driving, she was like, you don't want to be made to laugh, do you? I was like, no, not really. I'm like kind of nervous and I don't know. So she was like, this is routine outpatient surgery. Like you'll be fine. Like, yeah, I know. I know. You're right. You're right. So I get to the hospital and go through all the stuff, say goodbye. I'm on the operating table. You know, it's a, I'm on a laying down and there's, it's a white room with like silver instruments and things like that. And I, I kind of remember dozing off. And my next memory was um, almost like choking. And I heard voices saying, he's waking up, he's waking up, Uh, get the tube out of him. And so then my next memory was my wife just kind of appeared, right? I must have been sitting up in a room. Well, later I found out it was ICU. Um, oh. And so she said, honey, there's been an accident. You're going to be okay. The next few days are going to be telling. And you still have two hernias. And I remember at that moment, I mean, I was drugged up, right? And I just remember crying. Like I went into this stupid surgery to get these hernias repaired. At least, you know, what in the world happened? I don't know. Well, what happened was, um, is they uh, laparoscopic. That's where they stick, like they're called trocars. They stick a a, a steel thing in there. It's got instruments on the end of it, right? Where they do the instrument. They have one that has a light and one that has a camera. Or, okay. or two that have instruments and one light and one camera. There's three. It's laparoscopic. They don't in, you know cut you open besides you know a small incision. And so when he put the first one in, uh, there was bleeding coming out, and he had never had that before. Well, mind you, I had lost forty pounds. I was skinny, many. I was skinny, wasn't I? Oh, yeah, you were really skinny. I was too skinny. I mean, money makes you so thin. Matter of fact, when I went to Starbucks and got my drink, they would say, here's your caramel macchiato for too skinny Todd. Yeah. Do you remember they used to say that? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And they used to say, what are you eating for lunch? Ice cubes and yeah, water ice chips. And stuff. Yeah. 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 And so um, the doctor couldn't figure out what happened. Um, he sliced me open just a little bit down near my belly button, couldn't figure it out and bleeding profusely, I guess. And so uh, pretty much they did a stat thing that was like anybody in the operating rooms in this floor at this hospital 
come to this room. And so another surgeon came in and slipped me up nine inches and they opened me up and realized the doctor with the trocar had sliced my aorta where it goes off into your leg. Oh my God. And so that was bleeding out. And so I had two blood transfusions and uh, I have cow in me. That's how they, I guess, uh, fix arteries with other cow parts. So they, they, (laughs) you know, cleaned up my aorta where it splits off into my leg right there uh, with, with cow uh, artery. Uh, so that's, ooh, oh. that's good. Um, so I'm sorry. Sometimes <laughs> I do that. So um, <laughs> that was bad. Am I going to get like the uh, bad? Yeah. Get the wah, 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 we'll wah, give yeah. you a guest. <laughs> okay. Guest thank one. you. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I was in the ICU for three days. I was in the hospital for seven days. And just laying in the bed. And I had plenty of visitors. I had plenty of people that cared for me and checked in on me. It was wonderful. But I remember sitting there being so mad and upset. And then I thought about people that have been in accidents, not of their own fault. People that have had things that happen to their own life, not of their own doing, right? Whether it's abuse or, you know, hard topics uh, that we, you know, just can't imagine going through. Um, and it's tough. And I just remember thinking I've been around so many people in my life who have not forgiven, who have lived a long time with a lot of anger and frustration. And that anger and frustration ends up affecting the closest people to them. And they're not fun to be around. You probably can think of someone in your life that you know off the top of your head who's just a victim, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying victimization is not pretend world or whatever. Yes, there are victims in in this world. But forgiveness is a choice. And Olivia, I'll answer your question that that he asked you earlier. Forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is about you, your Mm -hmm. heart. If you want your heart to be forgiven and live a full life, you have to forgive even if the person doesn't deserve it. So the doctor, I decided to to forgive him audibly. I'll get to that in mm-hmm. a second. It's because I don't want to live the rest of my life as a victim of something that happened to me that shouldn't have happened. And thank God I'm alive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I had to slow down running. I only ran a 5K and a half marathon, uh, half marathon after that. And I, I still miss running. Uh, I still have two hernias that I... Uh, canceled an appointment to get those fixed a couple of years ago in Nashville, but uh, it's okay. They're not bothering yeah. me like they were. And I don't lift heavy boxes. It's a great way to get out of helping people move, yeah. honestly. There you go. Do I get an applause for that? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good penny for that. <laughs> so I, I remember the doctor. I mean, Am I on the couch I didn't still? Know. No, I, I thought oh, that's why they put the go. cow on you. Like they put the cow on you just so you could help move people, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. You're not using the superpower you have inside of you right now, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember the doctor coming in and he was uh, at the time, probably my age, if not younger. And um, he, I said, I, I want to let you know something. Um, I forgive you. I know that you didn't mean to do this. He goes, how can you forgive me? You are sitting here in the hospital, you were in ICU. I literally almost killed you. How can Mm. you forgive me? I said, I forgive you. It's mistake. I make mistakes at my job. Now I don't, I didn't tell him this. I don't almost kill someone at my work. I'm in radio, (laughs) but, uh, uh, you know, there's apples and oranges there, but, uh, tears filled up in in his eyes. Mm. And, um, we just had a moment and, um, he said, thank you. Wow. And so the nurses who uh, worked for him, uh, my nurses on that floor would come in and, and just say, you know, I, I don't think they were like plotting or anything, but they would talk. Uh, and then the nurses would come into me and go, doctor hasn't slept well at all. And he missed like two nights of sleep after what ha- what, what he did. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And um, this is his first major accident of his career and it's really shaking him up. I think I heard that actually before I forgave him. I think wow. that might have been one of the things to make me uh, forgive him. So December wow. 15th, 2016, yeah, my life changed. 
wow. wasn't over. God wasn't done with me yet. I hate that I had to go through that, but I was able to experience the power of forgiveness. And by the way, I had to forgive him because I have had to be, be forgiven so many times in my life with relationships mm. and mistakes that I've made. I had to forgive him. Yeah. And so I don't carry around the woes me oh, that happened to me. I'm a victim. Uh, I've had, I've, it's a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. And that's the choice that I made. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for sharing that, Todd. That's, yeah. I couldn't even, I couldn't even imagine being in that situation, but I love that you're to, to have that opportunity to, to forgive the doctor in person. Like that's one thing to forgive him. Like, okay, I forgive him inside, you know, personally, but to vocalize that to him, to hear how it affected him and the things that he was actually struggling with. We, it's easy. I think sometimes when somebody hurts us, not to actually put ourselves in their shoes and realize that maybe there's something going on there too, or we don't know how they're handling it. I do want to share. I actually put this out on Facebook uh, earlier and I asked the question, do you find it easy or a challenge to forgive people? And there's a lot of comments on here. Well, one of them I wanted to read and just kind of talk about too. Uh, uh, one person said, uh, it was actually text pap. If you guys know text pap in here, he actually wrote, I find it pretty easy, pretty easy to forgive overall, but to trust again is sometimes a little harder. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? About, it's pretty deep. And with my specific yeah. situation, um, that doctor for the next two years in his office, I had $80,000 in medical bills that insurance didn't cover because it was wow. a surgery accident. It was wow. the doc, they wanted the doctor to pay for it, right? Or the hospital. So my insurance wow. just bailed on me. But oh, I tell wow. you, the nurse and the doctor, he went to that board of that hospital and went to all the anesthesiologist, the this, the that, wow. the room. He got it all written off. Wow. He got wow. it all written off. I paid, oh, I paid my premium, you know, my, uh, uh, up to my, what is that? Not premium, uh, what I owe. Your deductible. Prior, deductible. Yeah. Yeah. Paid my deductible. And he said to me, he goes, when you want to do this, we'll do incision, not laparoscopy. I probably shouldn't have done it. You were too skinny. I kind of thought about that, but didn't trust my instincts. But I, I will I will do this for free and, and correct. Wow. And then we moved, right? But trust, I would go back to him and have him do the surgery. Wow. Because wow. he was forgiven, and I think he got more confidence through the forgiveness, and yeah. uh, I would trust That's him amazing. to do that. And so, yeah, trust with your emotions, trust with your heart, trust with your body, whatever it might be. Um, you're putting yourself out there, but I think, I think a lot of times, trusting, taking the risk, you'll never, you'll never know yeah. if you and yeah. if you get burnt again or again. Well, then you, then you know. Yeah. Then, you know, then, you know, that's good. That's good. There is a, I'll read one more to you and see your thoughts on this. There's a guy from his name's Mac Mac. And he said, he said, depending on the person, depending on if the person asks or not, it's harder to forgive someone that doesn't ask. Now you, you actually came through this cause you, you forgave someone that wasn't asking. Yeah. Uh, was that the first time you've like, you've forgiven someone that didn't ask or what do you see the benefits are for actually even saying, you know, I'm going to forgive this person, even though they haven't asked. Again, I think it's about your own heart. I don't think it's about the other person. I mean, yeah. baseline, it's just about, it's about you. And I think so many times we do make it about others, like others have to win our forgiveness. And then, yes, mm -hmm. I'll forgive you when I see actions change or when I see a humbleness or a humility inside of you. And, you know, maybe mm -hmm. that's the case. I'm not, I'm not blanket statement yeah. saying, you know, my way is the right way and everybody else's way is wrong. Not saying that, yeah. um, but I think I've come to learn that forgiveness is for your own heart. And especially if you call yourself a Christian with your relationship with Jesus, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus hung on a cross, beat a, a, a brutally beaten, and he forgive, forgave those who did that to him. I mean, what yeah. an example, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So That's good. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Let me see if we got some, let me bring on the mic here. I know we got some people on the, uh, list here oh this is a special guest here i get to bring up uh let's bring up mrs killer b if you want to come up here to the uh to the stage and yeah nice hat my question is did your wife struggle with forgiving the doctor mm. Ooh, good 
great question. Um, hmm. I don't think she did. Really? She just like kind of oh. took it in stride. Like this is where we are now and we just have to move on that kind of thing. Listen, when my wife has stuff happen in life, whether it's with kids, family or whatever, she just goes into, she just knows what to do. It's mm. not like, it's not thinking, feeling, it's just doing. Oh, how and interesting. Yeah. And I think she respected the whole thing. Not, not respect maybe isn't the right word, but I think she gave me space to handle and deal with it. You know, yeah. we didn't, I don't remember any conversation of her mm. upset at the doctor, mad at the doctor. I mean, we were mad at the insurance company and sure, it right was now. really hell on earth for two years. I had creditors calling. I had late oh, statements goodness. coming. I'm like, I'm not paying this. Yeah. What yeah. don't you understand Jeez. about this? So she was angry mm. at those things. And actually sure. she's pretty much takes care of the checkbook and paying bills and stuff like that. But she had to turn that over to me. She was just exhausted. And I, oh. well, yeah, I mean, I'll take care of yeah. that. Yeah. So mm. she did a lot of heavy lifting early on, but no, I don't, I, I don't think, I don't remember any conversation that we had that she was upset. Yeah. I was mm. just thinking about that, but thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Great question. Sorry, guys. All right, let's see. We got um, uh, we have Meta Voice. Let's bring Meta Voice up. Come on up, Meta Voice. Hey, Meta, a little faster. That yeah, I that almost was, tripped on that yeah, step, like, though. <laughs> you almost heard from my lawyer. Sorry, I need to put some signs. Yeah, that would have been trouble. <laughs> yeah, you, need a, you need a ramp there. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> Ryan. Ryan didn't yeah. know. Um, well, my my question basically, and it was well, at first it was going to be how long did it actually take you to forgive him after saying. You forgive them. That was my first question because it's easy to say it's harder to do at times. I wrestled with that. I was out of ICU because I remember the different room. Uh, when I did it, it was done. You were just over mm. with. Okay. Now, that, do that, I have, yeah. do I have sadness sometime? Do I have not regret, but do, uh, yeah, I mean, it comes up every once in a while because I have a scar Mm -hmm. And they so when they sewed me up, they kind of tightened up everything and it helped my uh, hernias a little bit. But also when they tightened me up, uh, I don't know for any women that have had a, a, a C-section. I know it's different, like my scars this way. But when they sewed me up, I have like this, they, they like sewed my stomach ending higher. And so I feel like I've always got this little pooch that I'm dealing with that I see that every day, right? In the shower when a t-shirt lays differently and I don't like that, but like, again, I'm alive. Life is more than my physical appearance. And um, so I don't ever go back and deal with that. I, when I forgave, I forgave. Wonderful. Mm. Now, my second, if I can do a second oh, question. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. My second question is because, you know, you went through this and, you know, you, you went through this with that doctor as well, trying to get all these bills, um, taking care of whatnot. <clears throat> did you see, um, did you see the doctor in the end be able to forgive themselves? Oh, good mm. question. I had follow up appointments with him. Mm. He was great. We had conversations. And one of those was I'm going to do everything in my power to make this go away financially for you. And when you're ready, please come back and I'll, I'll do the surgery for free. Absolute free. So those were part of those conversations outside of the hospital room. So okay. 36 staples, wow. nine inches. Whew. So wow. uh, that wow. was fun. I counted the staples as they took them out with pliers. Ew. Oh, geez. Yeah. All right. I was sweating on the table. <laughs> it didn't hurt. I have tattoos. It didn't hurt at all, but my mind was thinking these staples coming out. Oh, yeah. Great. Oh, I'm oh, going to go cringe over in my seat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I appreciate you answering yeah. that. Yeah. So you if can anyone's have eating, meta sorry. surgery, Todd. Oh, Thank you, Meta Voice. Meta surgery <laughs> room. Yeah. yeah. We could do meta a meta surgery room. Meta That's how yeah. a lot of doctors train now. Like, yeah. they they're started doing that kind of stuff in here. Well, you know what? Good point. I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to go to a small town hospital where I was living. We lived outside of Columbus and I just was like, mm, small town hospital. What are the chances of some accident happening? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Right. And so I, went, <laughs> I found this guy 
uh, he was in our insurance and he had this like new high finangled robotic thing where he actually goes and sits over there yeah. in the surgeries over here. And he's just doing all these things with his fingers, making all these instruments move. I'm wow. like, Oh yeah, this is cake. Like we're going with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, I, I've got a follow-up question for you and, and then I'm going to pull a contest lever because we need to give away some points. Someone oh, needs yeah, to yeah. Work and whack this B, right? Someone needs to whack the B and get 50 points. Metal voice is like me, me, me. Oh man, it might happen. We'll see the, uh, I, I, so one of the things that I, we've kind of touched on a little bit, but I would like to just talk about a little bit. One of the things that for myself, and I've heard others say it too, uh, it's easy to, sometimes it's, it's easier to, it's easy to forgive sometimes, but it's really hard to forget. Like, I mean, I know things that still surface back up in me that I've, I've forgiven, but then those moments come and I can feel it coming on. Like I can feel like maybe it's the way someone has hurt me before and I forgave them, but then somebody else, it seems like it might be going down that same path and it starts bringing it back up. And I start putting up walls all around to protect yeah. me. I don't know if you ever really can forget, right. but how any suggestions on how to remember to not put up walls around people that re they weren't the ones that hurt you. Cause you could, like I've learned that I've actually blocked people and kept them out of my life until I finally realized like you have got this wall up and you've got to, let it be torn down because I'm trying to bless you. But because of this, you're putting up this wall, which is, which is stopping me, preventing me from doing something for you that I want to do yeah. because of that unforgiveness. I've seen people in my life who I've hurt badly forget. Like, really? Wow. I hurt someone badly on a holiday. And when that holiday comes around for many years, I, put walls up for my own hurt caused, which is opposite of you. Right. Yeah. But there came a point years and years and years down the road that the person and I never talked about the significance of what that date was. And we just live our lives now. Mm -hmm. So you can slowly, I think that, you know, what is the same time heals everything or whatever. I'm not sure if that's true. Um, I think just day, day, mm. you know, if you're a follower of Jesus, it's daily dying to your selfishness and literally giving God control of your life in every decision that you make. And I know that's like, well, that's the greatest uh, Christian thing I've ever heard. You know, that's that's not it's not easy. It's hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Life is hard. Your memories are hard. Your heart hurts that get triggered are very hard. Um, and I would just say that you just have to continually search, uh, your soul for, uh, a, a peace. And I, for me, it's Jesus yeah. that is yeah. that peace. And that means praying. That means reading the Bible. That means trying to be in communication with him. And I am not perfect at that at all. I'm not a super Christian. I am not, I fail every day miserably. I yell at my son. i don't serve my wife as I should. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a mess, yeah. but, yeah. um, I, I think that you can move past once your focus is on Jesus, because what he did for everyone in this room is mm. paid the price to wipe away everyone's sins. And so I don't that's know. I, I know that sounds no, like that's a, good. just a, like a, church answer or whatever i don't mean it for it to well, sound no so. i think that i think that's i think that's good Todd. i think it's really good and even what you're touching on there too i think it's even for maybe it's not even there might be somebody in the audience here that's not just forgiving somebody else but it, there's also that self-forgiveness too oh gosh like, yeah i mean that's a whole other that's a whole other thing right it's not always just about forgiving somebody else but forgiving yourself too so you can move beyond because i, I mean i'm a i'm probably my worst critic yep same I mean, I really am. Uh, me and my wife have talked about that several times. Oh, she's coined out. She's so she coined their battery. Out. She's coined out. She's not even here. She's like, yeah. She, yeah she. Okay, so okay, let me tell you guys what she's really like. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, there was a time, like, even for myself, there was a time in my life, Todd, that, uh, like you said, being around people that that don't forgive, they can be, become very, like, toxic. hateful, angry. Toxic. Yeah, and they're very yeah. toxic. 
And, uh, and I was just talking to my son about this, not even a week ago. And I said, you know, you want to be careful because when you're, if you're hanging around people that are toxic like that all the time, you will become like that. I was like, I've seen it. I was like, I have workplaces, man, that I love my job. And then the people I was with was toxic. And guess what? It wouldn't take too long. I hated my job. I was complaining. It just rubs off on you. I was like, and you want to distance yourself from those. I had that in my own family to, to the point where we actually had family members, which Yes, there she is. There she is. Hey, Mrs. Clearby, you're back. So, <laughs> uh, but there was a time when we were going through this transition in life that God was revealing things different to me in life than the way I was raised, things I saw and was told. Yeah. And one of those things actually had to deal with somebody in our family. They, they this family lived in Kentucky. We were in Ohio, and uh, I just knew it was like it was his fiftieth birthday party. They invited us, and usually my family members wouldn't go to that. Uh, most of them. Um, I really felt like we w- we wanted to go, but I felt like the purpose for me to go was to ask him for forgiveness. Wow. And, and I took him aside and I asked him, I was like, hey, I just wanted to let you know, like I wanted to say I'm sorry and ask you to forgive me for, for thinking this way of you. And he said, I never, I never thought you thought that way of me. I never thought wow. that. I was like, I know you didn't, but I did. And I don't, I felt like God wanted me to come here to, to ask you to forgive me so much freedom came over me from that. And we are great friends. We always look forward to seeing him at Christmas time, but that was also part. I had an action that I had to take to forgive myself, but that was an action that God showed me. You need to go and actually ask him, even though he had no clue. Um, but it, it set me free for, for doing that. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. Your story just triggered a story for me where I was toxic. Um, for about a year and a half for two years recently. Really? And actually he, you bring me on here to talk about what is the, what's the title? What was the title of this? Uh, forgiveness. forgiveness. Forgiving the unforgivable. So, <laughs> yeah. Forgiving. Yes. forgiving. Yeah. I have someone in my life who I've not forgiven. Really? Right mm-hmm. now. Who I feel, uh, is she wearing, is she wrong. wearing a, is she wearing a pink? Oh uh, my God. Overalls. We'll talk later. Okay. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, no, but you know what? If 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 he were in here or in real life, uh, my first inclination would not to be forgive to forgive. I f- I feel like this person was very purposeful, hurtful, and really did a lot of people around him wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, here I am talking about forgiving the surgeon, and I'm not forgiven this person that I, I became toxic around, I, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I can't blame this person for my toxicity. I'm responsible for me, but uh, yeah, I haven't even thought about that, but yeah, when I think of this person, I get real angry. Like right now I could pick this couch up and throw it. I think. (laughs) <laughs> no, you can't. Our coder did a really good job connecting oh, okay, it good. to the floor. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can kick it with your invisible legs. Maybe it'll do yeah, something, but I don't okay. know. But, but well, I mean, I think that's a good challenge for us all. Like, I mean, it's easy. I mean, it's easy for me to look at people and say, you know, that I look at the way they've treated me, but it's, it's so important to look at yourself too and say, well, how is it affecting me or who are the people I'm not forgiven, you know, yeah. um, to help us move forward. So, well, well, thanks for sharing that, Todd. Thank yeah, you. that's hard because I literally, if I if someone might ask, do you, you know, what are your feelings towards this person? And mm-hmm. I would probably, unfortunately, say I kind of tend to hate him. <laughs> no. no. Uh, so here I am talking I mean, about real. I think I have that similar person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and I hate that, that I hate that I have those feelings and that I just yeah. was like this so encouraging, like, preachy kind of person. Like, yeah, man, you just got to forgive the surgeon that almost killed you. And then here's a guy that, I've mm. not forgiven and, yeah. and, and nope. can have hate in my heart for. And so again, I've not arrived. I'm not perfect. The, the certain circumstance about the surgery yeah. accident was monumental, a pivot point in my life mm-hmm. yet. I still can't forgive this person, but I still have some deep hurt and I'm in my yeah. life right now. He, what I'm doing for my career, which is a huge blessing. Actually, this person caused me to start in a roundabout way. It caused me to start my own business. Isn't that interesting how that can work out? It was I a mean, blessing. Yeah. I'm here today because of that person and I shouldn't have bad feelings for them because yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the happiest I'm in my life. Maybe That's someday right. I can forgive this person. 
Yeah, that's good, man. Thank you for sharing that. That's that is. It's like uh, we've talked about that. Me and my wife have talked about that. Mrs. Killer B. Uh, like you know, there was a time that I'm going. Why do I have to go through this? Why am I here? Why I'm tired of this? And then all of a sudden, it's like I can look back now and go, "Oh wow, it was because yeah. of that that got me to where I am now." Uh, but you don't pad. see that. Yeah, you don't see that no. at that time. And and it's learning that that forgiveness, that not uh, being unforgiving, actually still holds you back from moving forward even more. Yeah, it wow. does. Yeah, it does. Todd, I like to always give the give our guests an opportunity to to close us out with a thought. A thought that you have. So out of all of our conversations today, what would you hope your one takeaway would be for, for everybody here tonight? If you want to answer this, please answer. If you don't, that's okay too. Cause I know this room is filled with different people from different backgrounds and uh, different mm-hmm. faith, or maybe not even, you know, maybe there's a uh, atheist in here too. So I don't want to put it on, on the spot, but if, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you're a Christian, if, if, you know, raise your hand, I'm raising my hand. If, Okay, a couple people in here. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is for you, those who aren't. I think there's something in this as well, and I'll, I'll help you with that. So I would say don't let the work of God around you kill the work of God within you. Mm-hmm. You can be busy at church. You can be busy doing all the right things but not in relationship with the God of the universe. And if you don't believe in God, if you're another faith, don't let the work at work around you kill your home life. Don't let your uh, health, healthy addiction of exercising or eating right, kill the relationships around you, you know, fill in the blank, everything taken to the extreme is probably not bad. And I try my best because I go to extremes. I'm high, high or low, low. And over the years, as I've gotten older and gone through these experiences, I try to be more in the center of mm-hmm. moderation of, for everything. And I still, I still struggle with that because it's my personality, but yeah. um, that would be my final thought. Well, Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's podcast episode. If you liked, loved today's episode, go ahead and hit the subscribe button or leave us a review.